special welcome to all visitors, in particular to Mike and Barbara, who uh, many of you know, parents of Stephen Norton, who was our organist much of the time and our artist in resident, residence until his sudden death last year. So welcome, Mike and Barbara, you're always welcome here. From next week, we will be potentially requiring proof of the three G's, that you are geimpft, genesen, or getested. So please do make sure you have proof of vaccination, recovery, or a current test. I'm not quite sure how we'll progress that. We'll dis discuss it on Monday as to just how we're going to do deal with that. So let's praise God in the words of 372 that we will hum and those on Zoom can sing their hearts out. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Saviour. 
giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Eine Lesung aus dem fünften Buch Mose. Und nun höre, Israel, die Gebote und Rechte, die ich euch lehre dass ihr sie tun sollt, auf das ihr lebt und hineinkommt und das Land einnehmt, das euch der Herr, der Gott eurer Väter gibt. Ihr sollt nichts dazu tun zu dem, was ich euch gebiete und sollt auch nichts davon tun, auf das ihr bewahrt die Gebote des Herrn, eures Gottes, die ich euch gebiete. So haltet sie nun und tut sie, denn darin zeigt sich den Völkern eure Weisheit und euer Verstand. Wenn sie alle diese Gebote hören werden, dann müssen sie sagen, was für weise und verständige Leute sind das, ein herrliches Volk. Denn wo ist so ein herrliches Volk, dem Götter so nah sind wie uns der Herr, unser Gott, so oft wir ihn anrufen? Und wo ist so ein großes Volk, das so gerechte Ordnungen und Gebote hat, wie dies ganze Gesetz, das ich euch heute vorlege? Hüte dich nur und bewahre deine Seele gut, dass du nicht vergisst, was deine Augen gesehen haben und dass es nicht aus deinem Herzen kommt, dein ganzes Leben lang. Und du sollst deinen Kindern und Kindeskindern kundtun. The word of the Lord. Amen. Let us read the psalm responsively. I will begin. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Amen. 
There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. Yes. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. A reading from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forgot what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure, undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Christ. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. 
So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, my sisters and brothers, I've got a confession to make. When I'm preparing a sermon, I don't always read it in the original language. My Greek's not that good. What I do do is look up particular words, and I also listen to or read in several different translations and see what strikes me each week. So earlier in the week, I was reading and studying around James, quite convinced that was what you needed to hear this week. And then I decided I'd better off start again and you're going to get something from Mark instead. So you might want to have the gospel reading open because this passage has been cut apart for the lectionary. There's two bits missing. It confuses the fact that Jesus is speaking to three different sets of people. At first, he's speaking to the teachers of the law. Then he's speaking to the crowd in general. And the final bit is addressed to the disciples. So Jesus is in Galilee preaching. And in March, the teachers of the law, the scribes and Pharisees, they've traveled many hours from Jerusalem to check Jesus out. It seems to set him right. For some reason, I have a vision of clipboards and checklists. They're here for an inspection. Is this new teacher a good, devout, faithful Jew? Is he teaching his followers properly? Well, as you probably know, devout Jews to this day follow strict purity laws. They don't mix with, they certainly don't eat with outsiders. They don't touch certain things like dead bodies. And they have rituals to purify themselves before a meal and other times. And many aspects of Jesus' ministry involves him breaking those purity laws, mixing with people who are outside, mixing with people who are ritually unclean, eating with tax collectors and sinners. And I suspect word has got back to Jerusalem that this new teacher that's exciting everybody isn't honouring God by following all rules. 
And the inspectors note that Jesus' disciples, not all of them have washed their hands. So they challenge Jesus about it. Mark gives us an explanation of Jewish hygiene traditions, which tells us that his audience, even at the early stage when Mark is written, perhaps 70, maybe even 50 after Christ, there's already non-Jewish people in the church. And then I got a problem. Verse 4, have a look at verse 4, and I'll read it in the Common English Bible. See if you can spot the issue. Common English Bible. Upon returning from the marketplace, they don't eat without first immersing themselves. They observe many other rules that have been handed down, such as the washing of cups, jugs, pans, and sleeping mats. Now, in the NRSV that we heard so beautifully read, it says they don't eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And it doesn't mention sleeping mats. It talks about bronze kettles. So I'm all confused. Is it bronze kettles or is it sleeping mats? I need to know which is right. Or do I? Does it really make any difference? Such a minor variation. The books of the Bible are remarkably consistent across all versions, all the manuscripts, all the small parts that we've got. The Dead Sea Scrolls show that the manuscripts of the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, barely changed for thousands of years. They are remarkably original. So I'm prepared to put the uh, bronze kettles and sleeping mats on one side if you are. So the legal experts ask Jesus, why are your disciples not following God's law and washing their hands? And Jesus responds by pointing out that hand washing is is a law created by humans. It is in the Torah, the Jewish law book, but there it's only priests who have to wash their hands, not all people, before eating. Well, surely it's a good thing to wash our hands. Well, yes, of course it is, particularly during the time of pandemic. But in Jesus' time, easy access to water was a privilege of the rich. The poor would have had to travel to fetch water to the home. So the requirement to wash your hands before eating would have been an extra burden on poor village labourers out in the fields. Jesus isn't saying the hygiene rules are bad, but he's pointing out that the scribes and Pharisees are burdening people with extra rules, making their lives worse, when the whole point of Torah is to help people to come to the living God. The scribes and Pharisees have become so focused on their group's particular interpretation of the law that they've got rigid and judgmental. There's then a break in the reading where we hear about an example of people misusing a rule that is for dedicating things to God. They misuse it in order to keep their finances away from their relatives from their parents. And the teachers of the law have been enabling that one of doing. So Jesus then calls the people to him and says, nothing outside a person can make them unclean by going into them. Rather, it's what comes out of a person that defiles them. All the complex Jewish food laws of what is kosher and non-kosher are much less important than people's attitudes and behaviors. Now we don't want to take Jesus' words absolutely literally here. He knew that not everything is safe to eat. He knew full well some things can make people ill. First century Jews knew about spoiled foods, they knew about poisons. 
They hadn't yet discovered germ theory, but they knew how to keep well. This isn't health advice. Jesus is talking about spiritual cleanliness, spiritual hygiene. His meaning is that there is no point in keeping all the hygiene and food laws perfectly if then you get up from the dinner table and lie and cheat and steal. The teachers of the law have the wrong focus. They're looking at external behavior where Jesus is speaking about and offering a transformation of the heart that then leads on to change behavior. Social groups always find ways to indicate who is in and who is out, who's a part of the group and who's not. We call them boundary markers. If you think of a teenage tribe, the different clothes, music, interests of goths versus skinheads versus jocks versus nerds. Different Christian groups also have much more subtle boundary markers of rituals, words, phrases, type of music. And these can become a barrier to those thinking about joining our Christian communities. Boundary markers are fine when they prevent the weaker community from being oppressed by the stronger community. But boundary markers become a problem when a system is then used to exclude and exploit those who are vulnerable. In Jesus' time, living in strict purity according to the very tightest interpretation of the Jewish law and traditions, was only really possible for men living in Jerusalem who were relatively wealthy. Ritually clean food, excess water for full immersion bathing, would have been hard to come by in poor rural areas. Driving an electric car, Eating healthy food, buying organic recycling are examples of some modern boundary markers. And they are difficult, if not impossible, for those who are living on the breadline with a low income in the inner city, particularly for those who live in a food desert where they never see a fresh vegetable, but there's 101 chicken shops just down the road. Recycling is the last thing on your mind when you're exhausted, working two jobs just to pay the rent. These are all good things, but they're not central to being a Christ follower or to being a good person. So it's important to ask why of all of our traditions, all of our understandings and expectations, and that's the way we do things around here. Why do we do it this way? Why is this fundamental to who we are? Unconsidered tradition can be a barrier. Genuflecting at the altar, crossing ourselves in blessing are good things. They're great if they're considered and meaningful gestures, but they can become simply mindless routine. Or worse, an opportunity to judge other people who don't do things quite the way we think they should. All of our rituals, our rites, sacraments, scriptures must serve the purpose of loving God, loving others and loving ourselves. Our tradition should not get in the way of other people coming to God. So we understand the biological why of our current hand washing and mask wearing, but have we thought about the theological why? I would suggest by hand washing and mask wearing, we're showing loving care to our community and our neighbors and each other, particularly to those who have to work, the poorest who can't work from home, who have to go out into crowds, we're being a good example to our neighbours, encouraging others to 
to wear their masks and to keep their distance. And we're taking best care of the bodies which God has given us. So we can stay well and live and work to God's praise and glory. So what traditions have we got here at the Ascension, which distinguish us from our non-Christian or non-Episcopalian neighbours? And are there any of our traditions and our unwritten expectations that burden people unnecessarily? What can we do to continue on the journey to become God's beloved community? open and accessible to all. All of our rites, our sacraments, our scriptures must serve the purpose of enabling people to love the God who created us, to love our brothers and sisters, and to love ourselves as beloved children of God. Amen. Please stand as you're able as we affirm our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, all nations and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For our bishops, Michael and Mark, and for all bishops and other ministers. Oh. 
for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for Dean, for Clarissa and children Greta and Simona. We pray for Barbara, Mike and Roman as they lay Stephen to rest on Tuesday and celebrate his life. We pray for all those involved or affected by the atrocities being committed in Tigray, Ethiopia. We pray for the population of Afghanistan as they deal with the effects of the Taliban taking control of the country and all that that will mean, especially for the female members of the population. We pray for the families and friends of the military and civilian casualties of the recent attack. And we pray for those who are under threat, but have been unable to leave the country. We pray for the population of Haiti as they deal with the aftermath of the earthquake, with many lives lost and many more homeless. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We thank you for medical care, and we give thanks for those who have recovered from COVID infections. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Cheryl and Herman. We give thanks for the life of the Reverend Canon John Fletcher Lowe Jr., who died peacefully at home on Wednesday. May his soul rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray for comfort for his wife Mary Fran as she mourns him. We give thanks for the life of Gaynor who has died. May her soul rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. O oh Lord, we pray to you in gratitude, thanksgiving and joy that the search process has led to your servant Daniel Morrow hearing and answering the call to become our priest in charge. Grant him peace and strength as he makes this transition, continuing to support him as he seeks to be a faithful pastor. Grant us wisdom and patience as we listen to your call to us and seek to reflect your welcoming embrace, sharing your grace and shining the light of Christ all around us. Build us together as a strong, caring community as we open ourselves up to each other and to you, so that as Church of the Ascension, we can fulfill our part of your mission in and around Munich and far beyond. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We offer all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everybody. Please do sit down. Um, Janet is still on her holiday in the United States, so it falls to me again to welcome you all. Um, I hope you'll stay around outside and have a chat after the service is finished. Once again, the announcements are full of interesting stuff. In particular, there are three items that relate to this week, and I draw them to your attention. The first one is the update of the parish directory. Everyone who has an email address should have received an email inviting you, requesting you even, um, to update the details so that we make a, a fresh and correct version of the parish directory in time for Father Dan to arrive, because he's going to need it. Um, if you don't have email, then a letter is in the post with a printed out version of the form which we ask you to fill in and mail back to us, or fill out if you're American. Uh, next point is the Stephen Norton Memorial Service, and we will have the opportunity to watch it streamed live, and the link details, again, are given here. That is on the 31st of August. And there will be a mass um, to celebrate the feast day of Mother Teresa, uh, whose order organizes the soup kitchen that we participate in. Um, Cardinal Marx is holding the Mass, and we're invited to take part in that on Saturday. So please do look at all the information and take advantage of it. Thank you. offerings and oblations of our life and labour to the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to you. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy and peace. 
and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Gifts of God for you, the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.